So we've talked about the reflections about x and y axis, vertical and horizontal shifts, and those were the rigid transformations. And then we talked about the vertical compressions and stretches. So now I want to finish by talking about the horizontal compressions and stretches. So let's compare these. The vertical compression and stretch happened when we multiplied by a number after the function happened. So after the function happened, after the function happened. If the multiplication happens before the function, then you get a horizontal stretch or compress. And this is another one that for me is very counterintuitive. So if I multiply by a number bigger than one, counterintuitively, I get a horizontal compression. And if I multiply by a number between 0 and 1 before I do the function, this is what results in the horizontal stretch. Okay, so in the first example, I'm multiplying by a number bigger than 1. So let's see what that's going to do to the graph. So I'm going to draw the basic square root graph. Then multiplying by 4 before we do the function has the effect of smushing the graph up horizontally. You put your hands to the right and left and smush inward on the graph. And then let's just make sure we're also continuing to note what's the parent graph. So we just get in that habit, y equals square root of x. And for this second example, y equals square root of x. So now I'm multiplying by a number between 0 and 1. I'm multiplying by 1 third. So you might think that would be the one that smushes the graph, but no. That's the one that stretches the graph out. So please, please, please do graph these on Desmos. And look at those graphs and convince yourself that that is what's happening. And try some different ones. Try it with um, other functions and see what happens. Absolute value would be a good one. So here's a summary of all those different transformations that we have talked about. And I think it's a really good practice to write out a chart like this in your own notes. It helps you organize the information in your brain if you organize it graphically like this. So let's talk about what it means when we analyze a transformed graph. And it means go step by step from x outward. Say, what's happening to x? So here we have a parent graph in the first example of the square root of x. And 1 is being subtracted from the x. So that is going to shift right one unit. So that's a horizontal shift. Then the square root happens. Then the next thing that happens is multiplying by 4. And this multiplication is happening after the function. So this causes a vertical stretch by a factor of 4. So I need all that detail. A vertical stretch by a factor of 4. And then the last transformation is this multiplying by negative after the function, which causes the graph to reflect about the x-axis. So let me take a minute here and talk about um, language. Some people will say reflect in, reflect on, reflect over. You'll hear all those different words. It doesn't matter which one you use. Those are all appropriate. But you must use the word reflect. No other word is correct for what's happening here. It's a reflection that is a particular type of a transformation. So don't use any other word. Use the word reflect. OK, let's look at the second example. And again, we start with what is the parent function. And here it's the cubing function. So then we focus in on what's happening to x. And the first thing that's happening to x is 2 is being added before the function is happening. 
So that's going to cause the graph to shift left two units. Okay, then the cubing function happens. Then the next thing that happens is multiplying by a negative. So that's going to cause the reflection about the x-axis. And then the last thing that happens is this minus 3. And it's happening after the function. So that's going to shift us down 3 units. Now don't let me trick you by writing it like this. This is the same function. The, the order it's written in isn't important. It's the order of operations that happen to the number. So if I put a number in for x, I would add 2, then I would cube it, then I would multiply it by negative 1, and then I would subtract 3. So the order of the transformations has to do with what order the operations would happen in. OK, let's look at one more example. And again, we have the parent graph of the square root. And the first thing that's happening is x minus 3. So that's going to shift our graph to the right, 3 units. And then we see that after the square rooting function happens, there's a multiplier of 2. So that's going to be a vertical shift by a factor of 2. And then the last thing we see happening is the adding the 4, which will cause the graph to shift up 4 units. So please, please, please graph these on Desmos and look at them, and then you'll have a visual reference. OK, so there's two things you need to be able to do. What we were just doing, I would call analyze the function and talk about the transformations in words in the correct order. The other one is you need to be able to take the words written out and apply them to the function and write out the new equation of the function. So the first thing that needs to happen in this instance is shift up two units. So I'm starting with square root of x, and I want to shift it up two units. So after the function, outside the square root, I need to add 2. Okay, then the next thing I want to happen is for it to shift left 3 units. So I need to do x plus 3 inside the square root to make it shift to the left 3 units. And then the last shift is reflecting about the y-axis. That says put an opposite in the front of the x. And that has the effect of reflecting the graph about the y-axis. So give this some kind of name, and that would be your answer. And then let's look at this one more analyze question. If I have parent graph y equals square root of x, x minus 2 happening before the square root is going to shift it right two units. Then we have the square root graph. Then we're multiplying by 2 after square rooting. So this is going to be our vertical stretch by a factor of 2. And then the last transformation we're seeing is plus 1, which is going to shift up 1 unit. OK, and then the last exercise I want to look at is here we're giving a picture, a picture of a graph. And we're being asked to graph what would its transformation look like. So this is the graph of f of x. And we're being asked to graph g of x, which is f of x plus 2. So from what we've learned now, that means the graph needs to shift left two units. So wherever each point is plotted now, it needs to get plotted two units to the left. So the point negative 4, negative 2, negative 4, negative 2, needs to move two units to the left. So here is its new spot. The point 0, 2 needs to move two units to the left. 
So here's its new spot. The points are still connected by a straight line because this is a rigid transformation. The shape of the graph does not change. Then the point 2, 2 is going to shift left. And again, a straight line connecting. And then the point 4, 0 is going to shift left. And here's my new graph. Just everything is shifted left two units. OK, and then B asks us to find the graph that results from taking f of x plus 1 minus 2. And here we see that we need to shift left one unit and shift down two units. So each point needs to do that. So the point negative 4, negative 2 needs to shift left 1 and down 2. So here's its new spot. So let's, let's just think about that for a minute. I had the point negative 4, negative 2. Now I have the point negative 5, negative 4. So do you see that the y coordinate went down by 2 and the x coordinate went down by 1. So that can be just a double check. OK, so now the point 0, 2 is going to go left 1 and down 2. And these are still connected by a straight line because the transformation is rigid. The shape has not changed. Then the point 2, 2 shifts left 1 unit and down 2 units. And the point 4, 0 goes left 1 unit and down 2 units. So you can see that the shape has not changed. It was a rigid transformation, as if it was made out of really stiff wire, and all you did was move it on the grid. OK, then the last one's the trickiest one, because the last one asks, asks us to do f of 2x. So this multiplication by 2 is happening before the function. So this is the counterintuitive one. If you multiplied by 2 after the function, it's a stretch. If you multiply by 2 before the function, it's a compression. So it's going to make the graph half as wide as it was. So it's as if you put your hands on the right and the left and you pressed inward, and the graph is half as wide as it was. So the point 0, 2 is not going to move, OK? Because you're just squishing it in from the sides. So that point's going to stay where it is. But the point negative 4, negative 2 is only now going to be half as far away from the y-axis as it was. So you can see that the shape of the graph changes. The slope of the lines is going to change. And then the point 2, 2 was 2 away from the y-axis. So now it's only going to be 1 away from the y-axis because everything's getting squashed horizontally to be half as wide as it was. So then the point 4, 0 is going to become the point 2, 0 because it's only going to be half as far away from the y-axis as it was. So you can see this transformation changes the shape. So compressions and stretches are not rigid transformations. They change the shape of the graph. So let me know if you have any questions.